Hey, it's Joe Weisman Automator, and uh, another episode of what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. And so let me start off. I updated this script. I'm going to launch an earlier version of it so you can see how it was. And I realized when I was working on it, a couple of things that I wanted to change. So I uh, opened it up and changed them. It's, it, adapting, you know, editing GUIs aren't so hard. Creating them from scratch, it takes practice. We have a great course on it, right? So what I noticed in this was usually, and this is just a good, you know, plan columns that have a set width with this with this one very rarely changes in width where these others you can see how much it varies there this one we don't even show because it's so big right and it varies a lot the column even though it makes more sense to have it here columns of a set width you try to put first because then everything flows better so um the other thing i realized was hey this this could be a lot wider if we wanted it to um and as i mentioned before i was searching my b drive my my b drive which has everything under Dropbox, um, and we found 102 files. This is, here we're using the version of Studio for V2, so I'm going to launch this script. It's all in V2. Um, and here, you see it's wider than the other tool. I'll show the difference. So that's the old tool. Here's the new tool. So I made it wider, but also notice now how having this column here first, see how much cleaner that makes the data? It just makes it easier. It, it makes more sense, right? It doesn't truncate these it's a very small little tip, but man, and also I don't know you notice how much faster it loaded. Um, but and and yeah, I didn't find what um three files because that that brings in our other client work that's not under um the main S drive. Sometimes we share our Dropbox folders with the clients, and for that we have them in a different spot. When we only we we have copies of their stuff on our Dropbox under the S drive, but that's not like here. This for for David. Um, that's not under the the client's Dropbox. It's just ours, right? Um, same thing with Mike and Ryan. So anyway, you get the idea. We updated. I updated this one just now, just because I'm like, you know what? I I don't need to be showing those other couple files, and it takes so much longer to run that. But that other one of just setting the widths and adjusting it, and it wasn't hard. You know, I just went through, um, changed the the width. Here I set the widths of the columns. And notice I comment out because, yeah, I don't know too much what I'm doing with GUIs, and so I like to just make sure I'm safe. Here I changed the order of the columns. Um, and then I had to tell it somewhere in here, I told it where to, to grab when you double-click to get the right column because that's the path to the folder. Um, and then I changed the adjusted the widths because we didn't actually we only had it on one where the sort was and i said hey the the sort is going to be on column three let's adjust the column two width also we didn't have that i know it says here but two on the other one was the 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 folder path um, so yeah so easy update to that script so that one actually should be in that list which we'll see here but let's go ahead and get going um these actually like this file and this one these were updates because when we were on a call with um, the team, we realized our files weren't organized well and the library files shouldn't, we went to look for something and one of the things was the library wasn't where it should have been. So we reorganized and moved my copies of my libraries under our Dropbox elsewhere. And then I went to launch something and of course it broke because the path was no longer valid. So I had to go back. I said, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use, Grepwin to go do a search replace for the old path and replace it with a new one. So um, some of these other one, the older ones that are listed here are just updating the path to the library just in case we run, right? Um, add to startup. This is a pretty cool little script. Let me launch it. Now this, we had a V1 version and that's what's on the item right now. This one's not released yet in V2, but we made some updates to it that open on the other screen. Let me bring the Explorer over here. So, so this is the V2. And here, now we have check marks and red Xs if it's disabled and, and tells you if it's enabled or disabled. We probably could even lose the words, right? Like, I think it, it's pretty obvious that it's there, but it's fine. Um, what's cool we added to this was um, a delete functionality. So some of these um, aren't on, you know, some of them we just want to disable. Like, I've gone through, and I had prompt assistant twice. Um, somewhere up in here was also prompt assistant. So we run the that so i'm going to disable that right or i'll enable it but what if i really don't ever want to have this here again it was run on another computer or something i can hit delete and then that would remove it entirely and it doesn't keep like a history because in order to have the enable and disable it, you, if you disable it it's gone from the registry and we'd have to be able to enable it 
So anyway, yeah, you get the idea. Um, we should have this out this week, I think, the update. We just got to remember to go update it uh, on the automator. Uh, it's all written in V2. It, very cool, simple to use. You know, it used to be easy to enable, and you can still use your task manager, I think, to to, to disable, but um, this tool is just, you know, a little more flexible, and you get to have more control. So, all right. Um, transparent. I was playing with some stuff, and we'll show it a little bit later. We were creating... Um, blur effects and i think it's gonna be pretty cool because if you're when you want to obfuscate stuff on your video if you have pii information that's personal on your video and we go share it you know often we don't want to have that and in davinci resolve which is the editor we use for um blurring it's not simple you know in um camtasia super simple super easy to blur something right and a lot of editors super easy camtasia once you learn how to do it it's quote unquote easy as most things are right but it's not easy in DaVinci Resolve at first. And you have to do very, very precise things. The process is easy. It's just hard to remember the steps exactly the way to do them. Because if you don't do that often, anything is, right? So anyway, I'll show you here in a bit the blur one. Um, this downloading wishes, I talked to that last week. Um, we were trying, our fan who had worked through, just because we're like, hey, let's make this where we can release it. To get the text under the mouse. And uh, he was still having problems. I don't think we actually solved that one, unfortunately. Uh, this book writer, this is just another, these were examples of things that got updated from over our path because I just, I know that those, we haven't touched them in a while. Um, same with the Twitter. We have a Twitter poster, um, by the way, which we don't, we haven't shared that, but we'll have to share that at some point. But it, it's a little complicated because getting the OAuth is quirky. Um, it's not a programmatic approach. So it's not something we can just share generally with the public, but um, all my posts to Twitter get automated um, way out in advance. And I think I'm doing it twice a day, which is nice. Auto save. This one's pretty cool. Let me see if I can launch this script. Now it's almost done, but what's pretty cool is you can, you can give it, let's say I'm in, um, let's go to notepad, bring notepad over. And let's say, or, uh, well, yeah, we'll do notepad to start. So I want the base of my file names to say, example, I'm going to start, let's start the increments at one to make it obvious. And I'm going to not hit the save button at the beginning. Um, and this one keeps track of your program name. So I could actually have um, this running independently. And so any program, I can go from Notepad to Chrome and it would keep this running. Or I can turn this on and then this would only, this one would work inside Notepad. But if I went to Chrome, it would start it would start back at this increment number, right? Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Let me share. So I'll go file, save as. And of course it didn't work. Oh, because I didn't hit apply. I'm an idiot. So let me hit apply, file, save as. And now notice it says example 0001, and let's just save it. And now if I come back, make a change, file, save as, it's going to say as 0002, because I'm doing this, and it didn't work. This is, again, why we haven't released it. Let's try this again, and I'll show this. The good news is we document these things and I actually show um, Irfan or whoever's working on it um, the issue, right, like well, how it didn't work. So that is interesting. It was working fine. The other day, I thought. There we go. That time it worked. So, yeah, it's um, what what really, like if you're in, let's say, Chrome, and I go to do a save as image, this is where often you'll go somewhere and you want to get a bunch of pictures, and you don't want to have to name them all. So now notice I didn't have, um, let me bring up the GUI. Um, I'm going to say pick. Oh, and you know what? And I didn't hit the, have the save button. Let me, let me do that as well. And actually, I think that might be part of the problem of why it wasn't working properly. So I'm going to hit pick and save. And now, save image as. And it didn't work. So I thought we had this closer. Um, it should be renaming that for me. And actually, there we go. It actually saved it. And here it notifies you that it's been saved. So now if I come into another thing, save as, it'll increment it. Save, and it does it so fast. So see, that changed it to three. It does it so fast. So imagine if you had a bunch of these that you were trying to save, how simple 
that is, right? Obviously, you wouldn't rename the same thing over and over, download it over and over, but see how fast that is? Very, very cool. Um, and in the tool, oh, I thought it was there. That's sorry. So there's a general preference. I'm clicking on the system tray icon, which is on the other screen. Um, here we can say, how many zeros do you want to pad it with and have a hotkey to bring up the GUI? Let me see. Control and that control home for some reason doesn't seem to work for me, which I, I've noticed. So, Anyway, it's not there yet, right? But you get the idea. That's going to be a very handy one for some people. Um, this incrementer, that's what all those are. Clip history. This is another one where almost, it, it actually is on the automator, honestly. Um, we just haven't made a video on it. But let me go ahead and launch it. So this can allow you, let's say... Preferences, um, here we go. How far back? I'm gonna go keep it for 15 minutes, apply. Um, that allows you just to, how long this is gonna stay, and then we can filter on it later. But I'm gonna come in here, let's say to here, and copy. It only copies, it only works with text, right? So. So I'm copying, as I'm copying, those things should be showing up in here. And so the one nice thing is I can come into this tool and see it. And actually, I don't know if I double click it. Does it, maybe I can, I can control C. And Isaiah was saying we should be able to select multiple and hit copy. But actually, I don't even know. I'm going to have to ask Griffin. I don't know how to, is it, let me see if it's, now it disappeared. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to hit copy, control C. It, we should be using notify there to say, but it's not. Yeah, um, that's crazy. I don't, I, I never realized, because the thing is, um, you don't have to come into the tool. You can, under preferences, turn on the auto suggestions. So show suggestions and control shift A turns on and off that. So now when I start typing, So see it right here, the white on white's a bad um, example, but. All right, so let me bring in site and show you here. So Joe was here. I'm gonna copy those individually. Now, when I start typing, of course it's three letters, so that wouldn't really help, right? But you can see it a little easier here. So imagine if you had a lot of stuff it's monitoring your clipboard and auto suggest them as you type, right? Which is going to be really, really cool. And yeah, when you have a big blurb, it'll, I think it'll be very handy where you copied a bunch of code. And, and if I copy a lot of it, I'm not actually sure what, let's see here. So I copied all of that. And now I don't know. Yeah. It's only showing. So I don't know which one's going to be. Let's do that. Let's copy something that's more obvious. I'll start it off with Taco. So I'm going to copy all of that, delete it. Now when I hit Taco, so it's only showing... What? Okay, that's not supposed to be that way. Um, I'm going to have to ask Earthman, what's going on with that? Why is it going word by word? It shouldn't be word by word. Um, and th there it is. It's there. So, yeah, this is also, well, now I have another bug show them of, like, what, what's going on with that. But also, I don't understand how I'm supposed to copy this. I'm double-clicking it. Nothing seems to be copying it. And how did that get, what? Oh, because it was on my clipboard. Taco. And it's not working. So, I don't know. Um, We'll figure that out. But that's going to be another cool tool. That one and our um, the auto suggestors, which is borrowed from that, is uh, also on the automator now. Uh, we'll cover that here in a minute. Clip history. So these are all clip history. We've been spending a lot of time on it. You know, these tools take a lot of time. You'd be surprised. Um, they're not super simple and fast and easy. We spend easily, I'd say, 60 hours easily on a lot of these tools. 
Um, so you imagine that it, it takes time, right? So if, if you can donate when you download it, where it's greatly appreciated. Anyway, auto suggester. So here's the auto suggester. And let's go ahead and open that folder. And this one is going to be seem pretty similar, but you the cool one with this one is um both this one and the clip history one are are I mentioned donations. Those are actually going to be paid tools. They're like four or five dollars or something, right? They're not expensive. But so now um that should have, when it launched, should have or hopefully we have a preference for it, but we'll come up here. I've put in a word list. I think this is just the auto hotkey uh variables. So we have a list and you can choose. Um, I can double click this and open the, where that is. And here you can see these are the auto hockey variables, right? So even in Notepad, let's go back to Notepad. I can start typing and get an assist list of the variable names. But imagine if you had something else, list email addresses or names of people or names of passive folders that you use a lot or whatever. Um, you, and it, what's really cool also is it doesn't have to be an exact match. We have fuzzy matching built in. So a K, so see how the A H K dir the first one listed, um, that's not, um, as long as the letters are in order, like if I put an I here, there's, oh, there still is something that has an I and then it disappeared. So this is another good example of showing our fan of like, it's, it's sometimes it's disappearing too fast. So yeah, that's the one we've we've sunk a lot of time in, uh, but we're getting really close. So let's close out of all that. Let me get rid of that too, because the other thing is it does have a hotkey for turning on and off the auto assist typing, but because it can be very annoying too. So yeah, most recently used. This is a way where we're make, setting a way a script that you can like that auto suggester also pulls in from your most recently used file list folder and file list um which also led me to think hey let's create a script that makes it easy to delete your mru list from programs and from files and stuff in windows because sometimes there's stuff you don't want visible and, and so where it might just creep in there so um blur stuff here we go so i'm not sure i think number three or four was the one let's open that let's get to the folder I'm not sure which one's which. Oh, there we go. So, hey, come on. What? Apparently, that's not the one that I can click. Go figure. Let's try. Come on. Oh, this is one. Okay, now this one I can drag and move and I can adjust. So just imagine if you had something that you wanted to blur. Now, this is too much of a blur. <laughs> Excuse me. So this is almost like a, a pure plain pain, right? It's too much of a blur. Um, we want it to where it's softer so we can see some stuff behind it, but not a lot. Let me try one of the other one. Let me exit that. I got a, a bunch of stuff running. That one, so exit, exit. Oh, okay, so here, and, and it's funny, is I'm going to have to see if I can hit the hotkey, but notice how this text is weird. So that's one of the blurring things I did uh, was making the tra the background transparent. So <laughs> so ironic, but see how it's fading in there? So we're, we're testing a lot of different ways to make it blur, but um, it all, it'll, it's pretty cool because you can obfuscate parts of the screen I think that three was the the one that was mostly, yeah. It's just it it's too obfuscated, right? But um, you get the idea, and so that's another cool one that at some point we'll we'll have. Let me uh, exit out some of these guys. To get it, and I accidentally killed my recently run file list. So let me uh, use prompt assistant to restart that one. Now I don't know which version. Oh, good, that's the one. That's the new version. All right, blur stuff. Okay, um, so we're working on, we have Excel files and um, let's open this and hopefully I can get the Excel data. Yeah, this is a simple example where we were, let me see, it should be my Excel history. Also, so the MRU, as I mentioned earlier, um, that's like this list, 
right? Recent files and folders. So there's the cheat Excel hotkeys. Um, and what I asked Rizwan to do, even though he's he's done stuff with Excel before, I asked him to use our Excel function library built into Prompt Assistant to write. Let's let's edit this guy. And so I think almost exclusively he used the Excel function library. So if I click here and go down to this, this is our Excel function library. Also note, I can hit control X, X, control shift X. So control shift X and that menu pops up directly, which is really cool because I don't have to navigate to it. And so in here, he used like this to sell good start. So that was notice. I don't know where that T came from, uh, but uh, that was the, how that got put in there. Right. And, what the thing is in Excel, I said, hey, some of these, and let's see, I don't know if it's actually in this one. No, because this is one I did. Um, what we need is one that's like Telegram or I think SPSS had them where they're listed. Yeah, here it says Windows or Command T for Mac, right? And all of our viewers are, are really Windows users. So... Um, what I wanted to do was to write a script, and I'll say column C. Let's see what what's in here. Um, this will detect what call. This will detect your selected column or the first selected column and store it. Get the last row, and then use that range to loop over them. And right now, all it's doing is just showing the text there. So if I if I first run the script, now if I come in here, highlight, I can actually click here. It's going to start going over these cells, right? So it's looping, it's going down here, which of course is silly, but what I told Rizwan, yeah, let me get rid of that, is in Excel, by default, you don't have a way to do regular expressions. And what I wanna be able to do is to say, hey, you know what, we wanna look for this, in this example, anything to the, the first part of here, over to where, to there, and remove all that. So we'll write a regular expression because the text, of course, is changing, right? So we could just say strip everything to when you find the first left paren, which in this case would probably work just fine. That's not always going to be the case. So I wanted a simple example to show, hey, here, here is how you, you first connect to a running instance of Excel, get the selected column, Find out where the last row is. This build yourself a range. That's what he's doing here with the column, and, he, and he's skipping the header row and getting the last row. And then we're for looping over the cells in that range, and we're just right now doing a message box here. We'll get the text, do a regular expression, and then shove the new text back into there, right? But I wanted an example one of of just we haven't done a video on Excel in a while, so this is a nice simple video. But also we have all these cheat sheets that we're going to be making available for people. Um, and I wanted to make it, you know, part of creating them was to make a video. So that's what that is. So clip share, um, I, I'm surprised that actually got edited, but um, yeah, we've been working on it to, to make it adapted to where other people can use it. And uh, that allows us to share clipboards across computers, at least with the basic stuff like text and files. Uh, maybe someday we'll add pictures and maybe someday we'll have a history built into it. Right now we don't. Um, this compare sets, this was another cool, we we talked about it in the hero group yesterday. So we're going to, let me launch it here. It What it does is it allows you to put in two lists of stuff, right? And we can run the comparison to say, hey, what's in list A? So this is A not B, this is B not A, and this is um, A and B. But notice how six is here and is here, but that's independent. Well, that's because we didn't trim the white space. So if I turn this on, and we run it, now six is in both. And seven is in both, but seven here is lowercase and seven here is title cased. So let's do a case sensitive search. Now seven's gonna get pulled out because it's no longer the same, right? So this is really cool. And you can do this with thousands of things, but also once you get your list, I can hit control shift A to get that top list, control shift B, to get the bottom list and what a red and blue make, they make purple. So control shift she, C is purple. Um, those get copied to your clipboard. And it's really, really handy when you're trying to understand what's in one list and not the other. So very cool little tool. 
right now this one i don't this version two the version one is available on the automator this v2 version of it which has a couple extra bells and whistles isn't uploaded yet but it's done so that one we can uh this cosmo that was just the path that got updated but it reads a file and displays a random quote we we did notice a um an oversight, like a, a tweak we had to make into our Excel function library, which that function library is great. And especially if you're a prompt assistant user, there's a module you can just import and then go to town on it, right? It's built in there. The FFMP3 Ripper, um, these are going to be available pretty soon. This dev version is getting worked on. Um, let me show you, and I'll talk it through. Let's, let Maybe I can, what I want is an older GUI. Now let me, I'm going to, I'm just going to do a screenshot of it. And then let me exit out of that guy. And now let me launch the, the current one. Works a lot better when I... Let's launch the current one. There we go. So our GUI, even though it's still compared to like Handbrake, it's very, very simple. What I realized was some of the things are really more like a preference. So like this delete source, um, delete all metadata, those are things that shouldn't be we don't need to have them here um there was i think one other one let's see here so delete source after processing delete metadata oh and then restore defaults so in the new version and i still haven't released this at all yet this will be another paid tool but like five bucks or something and um these are these have assigned default values the the ones that i typically use um, also note, like here, this used to say lib x265 because that is what is actually in the code. FFmpeg is is run by a command prompt, and so that's what you feed to it. But hey, that's not what users want, and I think maybe this. Well, I don't know. Um, oh, good, he added the the tooltips, so now it has h264 and h265. But we have a tooltip, which um, and maybe we'll work a little on the spacing in here, so it's a little more legible, but and maybe increase the font. But it's pretty cool because it, it helps you understand it. But these tooltips are also remembered. So if I set a certain setting and I come back to it, it'll be on. But you might want to restore the defaults. Um, and actually, yeah. No, I don't love that. The restore defaults should just assign them, not reload the script. Um, not a horrible thing. I mean, it's still, it's a cheap tool, right? But this is a really great tool, especially if you want to rip out the metadata sometimes will be titles or tags and things that you don't want and that's not easy to do so uh, this tool will go rip those out it also you can have it keep the original um, dpi you can shrink it down uh, this gets appended to the file name so we noticed a bug where isaias was removing this and then running it but it was trying to overwrite itself so we fixed that also you could come in here in the old one you could hit skip even though nothing's running and it would try to do it and i'm like that's silly so now that one's um, disabled until you start running something. Same thing with the open last folder. Until it's been run once, that's not available. So before you could hit that and it would come up and say, hey, you shouldn't be able to do this. Um, so you shouldn't be able to click open last folder. It, it, it would warn you, you can't do this, but I'm like, why, why have it enabled? Let's just disable it. So this tool's come a long ways. We're almost ready to release it. I think, it, and just a simple little change in the GUI, and like it just cleaned it up. Like even though it's not horrible, it still just cleaned it up a little bit more to something that you're not going to want to change. Most of these things you don't change every time, right? So um, why have them on the main GUI? So I, I'm a big believer in simpler is better. So yes, yeah, so that's a great tool. We also have one that um, rips the MP3 files. Um. But keeping track of the the FFmpeg, this one will track your process of going through that FFmpeg video, or the sorry, the video, and that's not easy. So I had paid Tidbit to figure that out, and so which is again, you know, I've spent a couple hundred dollars easily, more than that, on developing that tool. Now I use it all the time; I love it, right? But it's one of the reasons why I want to sell the tool because I'd like to recoup some of those costs. Get Active Path. We covered this. this is a great tool. This one's available now. Um, I'm not sure what we updated. Maybe we saw a bug, but and I have it running. It's the GAP in my system tray icon. And if I'm on a, a, a auto hockey GUI, mm -hmm. if I hit it, what? There we go. So it'll get the path to that script. But if I'm in a program like Studio, it will give me the path to that file. And also like in Excel, which I closed Excel. But um, Excel, Outlook, not Outlook, sorry, PowerPoint, Word, 
a lot of the office programs, even Grepwin and some other tools, it will give that active path of the file, which is really, really handy. It's hard to believe how handy that is. And I showed also how you can uh, select text on a given page, um, and then it will hyperlink. It will give you a pretty hyperlink um, that you can paste. And so someone can click that, you know, like you paste that into Word or, or your email. Um, during the hero call, which I need to go make a download for this, we recreated the resizable GUI I have online into V2. So we need to go make that shareable. Um, but let, let me open this. I'm not sure if Isaiah did it in this folder. Oh, no, that that looks like a V2. Let's see, 216. Yeah, okay. Let me let me open Studio and uh, drag this in. So live in a hero call, I asked Isaiah to convert the my resizable GUI to a V2 GUI. And you can tell because these are objects, right? And that's where um, it's just so much cleaner. Uh, it's funny he left these two in here because he was doing this live. And we should rename this thing. Resizable. Well, we need to move it. But um, it's really cool because let me if I launch it, it created. Now we have two GUIs. So they're, it's a function. And look, it's resizable, right? So both of them are resizable. So if you need to create a quick GUI, you can put this function in your library and then just include it, include the path to it, and then call it. And you can call it, this one is just with text, or you can give it parameters like the width and height. And maybe we should add the X and Y location of where you want it to be, right? Because that'd be another very, um, we can have a default, um, which in here you can see I have 900 and 600 of the default width. So if you don't pass it the height and width, that is the default height and width, but we should also have um, an X and Y, default X and Y of where it's going to show up, right? So, and then you can pass parameters to it of that if you want, right? So very simple script. Um, Isaiah has demonstrated how the V1 version was a fair amount longer because you, you had to do some extra stuff. But yeah, very cool little script we wrote. Um, let's go back to here. Um Irfan is working. He's been making some videos on Rafadium. Hopefully we'll get those out um, in a bit. And he's updating stuff in Prompt Assistant and updating Rafadium. So it's taking time. But yeah, we're updating a lot of stuff with Rafadium. It's a great, uh, more robust way to do web scraping with AutoHotKey. Um, so lots of stuff on that. The WinClip API, we just, we um, mentioned that in the hero call and that it's ways that you can manipulate the clipboard. Yeah, there's a V2 version of it, but it's hard to find. So we created a download for that. Um, I um, I think it's just WinClip. If you look for the automator slash WinClip, you'll find that. My media player, I was making some tweaks to it. I use that one a lot, and I just changed it to where now when I hold down Control, Shift, and Scroll, um, you can adjust the volume um, one level at a time, which is really handy. This search replacement word. Um, I work on that with the newsletter. I think that was also the path. We just updated the path because these things broke when my library moved locations. Uh, add to list. Oh, this is for extracting our... On the automator, when you download something, we ask you, I think, two questions. And those get put into the database on WordPress. Those are not something that are easy to connect to our newsletter list to say, hey, let's say you download something to do with Excel. Oh, if we have an Excel drip campaign to help say, here's how you can learn Excel, here's the first step, second step, third step, that's not easy to tie to it, right? Um, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The, the, the thing I just told you, that is something you can do. But the questions that we ask about like, how long have you been using out of hockey and what's your job situation? Are you retired or you're a manager or entrepreneur? Those aren't. So we had to write a script that would, use MySQL um, to connect to the database, look at how people ask the question, and then push them into a list where then we can send them emails saying, hey, you're a student, here's things that you might want, or hey, you're retired, here's some other things you might want, right? So that's what that does. Uh, recently modified. So we just talked about this one, hero content. I don't know what that is. Weekly hero content, what is that? I think this is updating. Oh yeah, okay. So that um every hero call, and I'll I'll have to figure out how to do a video on it. You know, we have hundreds and hundreds of hours of hero calls, and they get do get pushed up on YouTube, but they're unlisted if unless you're a hero member. So 
every hero call, I have to take the video, push it into YouTube, wait a good hour, hour and a half, which reminds me I have to release uh, the, the videos from this weekend. And then after it can generate subtitles, I use AI to make a summary of it. And then the summary, unfortunately, is too long for inside YouTube. So I have to truncate the summary, push it into YouTube. Um, and then I create the full version of the summary instead of truncating, because I don't want to limit it. If we have more, if there's more than 5,000 lines, why? And we, we, I know I can't fit that in YouTube, but I can't fit that on the automator when we describe what's on the call. So that way people, if they search for text, they can easier, easier to find it. So that one is on the automator. Um, Anyway, so we post it there, but then I, in one of them, I need rich text. The other one, I need HTML. And then I also have to put the YouTube thumbnail um, with the hyperlink. It's really involving and it takes, you know, a good, it's not hard. You just have to remember a lot of hoops, mental hoops to remember which, the way you're doing um, for which one. And each one takes me, let's say, eh, seven minutes, I'd say per video to go do this, maybe six minutes. Um now, Irfan has automated a lot of it with using Refadium to do almost everything. So I, I basically upload the video, still, I wait, I come back, I hit the hyperlink, and it does the rest. And it builds it all. And what we just didn't automate was the pasting onto the automate, but everything else is basically taken care of. So very cool. Um, it's going to save me a ton of time. And I'll once we get that working, I'll figure out how to do a video. Because um, there's not, I you know, sharing... <laughs> Well, I'd have to obfuscate the URL, but sharing the the what's in the video, you know, the topics, that's not a big deal. But we can't actually share the content unless you're a hero member. Um, cleaning where so we were working up updating our um libraries, YouTube image runners. This one also I I I didn't oh, that was just still the library for running it. That's right, that broke as well. I had to update it. Um, but let me show you let's pick no i can't do that um hold on one second okay so i'm going to copy this url and let's go to i use this oh i can't even use that tool well we'll just do it in notepad fine so i'm gonna paste it so i have a script where i can highlight and i can have other words here so i'm going to select all of that and hit my hotkey which is apps key y for me um, that should work. And of course it didn't, it, it doesn't even look like it, it tried. Is there no warning? Oh, there we go. Now, what's interesting is I thought we had that where it uses a regex and says, hey, there's a YouTube API in here and it would parse it. But I'll have to ask Isaiah's. Um, I know if it if it is surrounded with quotes and whatnot, it still gets it properly. I think that works right. Yeah. But what it does is I can paste this and um, if I go into site, uh, anyway, you get the idea at all. So anyway, I hope that was interesting to you. Please like the video if you learned something. Um, they want me to keep making these videos. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We have great auto hockey courses. If you're interested in learning auto hockey, it's a it's a game changer, right? You uh, we had an amazing client call with a guy just the other day, and uh, he's been using auto hockey since December. But he was he was really um, he was be beyond beginner level stuff. But he was really stoked to be talking to us. A lot of people realize auto hockey is cool but they don't realize the potential and how easy it can be to do more. So on that call, it was like a two and a half hour call. We leveled him up in a lot of ways and opened his eyes to, to things that are how to approach things better. So our private tutorial sessions are also really good. If you're struggling to learn and want to, you know, if you have money and want to save time, right. Have us help you write your code. Um, it, you know, we're, I'm not looking for work. I'm just saying, boy, it, it's an eye opener for most people. So, uh, give us some thought. Have a great day. Cheers.